welcome to Fentor. I'm at Newmarket Harley Davidson and going to do a comparison video of Fat Bob versus the new Sportster S. It's going to be quite interesting. The two bikes are probably going to be considered by many um, in their purchasing decisions when it comes to Harley Davidson. So let's go through that. I'll go in and see Dan and get myself sorted for the ride. See you shortly on the Sports Dress. Oh, Sports Dress. Well, thank you very much, Newmarket Harley, for letting me have a go on this brand new, just launched last week at Newmarket, or on Saturday actually, it's Tuesday today, one of the first people to ride it. Lucky Fentor. Feels a little bit more compact than Fat Bob. There we are. So, um, what's the idea behind my video today? Well, it's really just to see the difference between this and Fat Bob. Give you an idea, because um, I think I've, I think a lot of people who are the sort of customers who would have bought Fat Bob would potentially consider this. And when you look at the, the, uh, the figures, this may make a lot of sense for your bank. So, finally I'm off the horrible little bit of busy road, only a mile or so from Newmarket Harley, and on these lovely roads. Beautiful autumn day, perfect. Lucky Fentor. So, um, what's it like so far? Well, it feels compact compared to Fat Bob. It feels nimble and uh, very quiet because, of course, there's no uh, aftermarket exhaust or anything on this beast yet. So, uh, 30 miles an hour. Let's uh, just see how it accelerates. It's quicker than Fat Bob, even though I've got stage two. Whoops. It's quick. A lot of torque there. Of course, a lot lighter. Oh, oh it is a quick Harley. <laughs> that bob's going to feel a bit sluggish. Hopefully, you can see the uh, display down here now. What? I mean, this is a modern Harley, so we've got a water-cooled 1250 brand new design engine, well, new this year. Oh my God! This has got some punch! <laughs> it's quick. It shouldn't have a Harley badge on it, should it? It's too fast. So, let's go through some of the nice features um, on this bike. First of all, let's enjoy a corner. And that's fourth gear, maybe a little bit low for it. Third gear now for this corner. Lovely. Certainly went round there okay. get for an overtake. Here we go. Bloody hell! It is quick! Shite! <laughs> that is a fast, fast Harley. Bloody hell! Oh. 
There's another YouTuber says, Nationals! Look at that. Huge torque, up to 4,000 revs. Now, Fat Bob accelerates nicely, but nothing like this. You don't need to rev it. It's wonderful. No, it is doing a lot more revs, admittedly, than Fat Bob. Look the same speeds, but... Anyway, it's just... Rather good, doesn't it? I've just pulled over and... Uh, I've got the phone connected. And um, when you have the phone connected with the Harley Davidson app, you get an optional map display. And if you sign up, which I haven't done, for a HD Harley Davidson free, free account with an email and all that sort of stuff, you then get navigation. Now this also will link to your headset and your phone, so you can get phone calls through it. You could get navigation instructions through your headset. And, uh, I mean, I haven't set it up. How easy it is, I don't know. Can't be worse than the BMW. <coughs> <laughs> Not that I'm using navigation instructions to the headset, but uh, I spent hours trying to get that to work. Sort of gave in. I know it does work with some perseverance to a degree. Anyway, isn't that great? got maps, navigation built into the bike. The standard. Let's go through the standard things that this bike has. Well, something Fentor viewers will know that I love cruise control. Standard. I had to pay £400 to have cruise control fitted to Fat Bob because it's not standard. Of course, there's no navigation as standard on uh, Fat Bob. In fact, most bikes don't have navigation as standard. This does. And it's built into this lovely display. It doesn't spoil the look of the bike. You know, um, it's great. Okay, I probably still have a quad lock with my phone on there and all the serving maps, but yeah, that's me. I'm just a bit weird. Now, it has a button here for heated grips. Um, somewhere, there. There we are, button for heated grips. That button, um, as yet doesn't work because they aren't heater grips but there is an option you can choose a later date or have them retrofitted as with Harley you can add these things later on um, I've got my battery heater gloves today it's a bit chilly but I'm warm as toast so that's fine so yeah I, I really like this it's it's tech I like beautifully done Anyway, let's go back to the normal display. You press the home button here. I've just got the old rev counter and the speed. And that's enjoy this road. Well, I'm in six gear. I don't need to change down. Don't really need to use a gearbox on a road like this. Stay in top gear around this corner. Look at that. Effortless, effortless, and it handles beautifully. Suspension's a bit firmer than Fat Bob, but or how I have it set. But I would say that it's uh, soaking up the bumps pretty well. It's certainly keeping its line well in the corners. Very, very nice. Very nice. Another nice feature about this, just like on the new Pan America. Um, is the ride mode so you've got I've got it in standard road mode which seems pretty good but it's also got a sport mode and uh, a rain mode rain mode is uh, I use it quite often when out in the rain on the BMW um, works a treat so I like those mode changes but in the road setting well it's good anyway. Do you need to change modes? Don't know. Shall I put it in sport? What do you reckon? Sport! There's a little S has come up here. 
in fourth gear. Does it make it more lively or excitable? Yes, it does. Bloody hell! <laughs> Goodness me! I have to say... Bloody hell! I'm oh, sorry, but this is good. You're not going to be... <laughs> this is good. Very good. Oh, shite. That's a problem now. I like riding it. Now, let's go to the seating position. Some of you guys who have got Harleys are going to appreciate it. Feet forward a little bit. Very similar to Fat Bob foot position. I would say the brake pedal and gear lever are better positioned than on my Fat Bob. Especially the brake pedals, the foot brake for the rear brake is a very nice. Controls are a lighter than Fat Bob, the clutch is lighter, it's easy to blip the throttle whilst braking. That's all nice. It's a bit, oh, it's not quite so smooth on the, in the sport setting, so I guess uh, if you're in town or pottering along, keep it in road. <laughs> Just make it more of a hooligan. Bloody hell. I'm not going to overtake that car here. Coming up to a village. Anyway. Now, as you may have noticed, a sort of theme in some Fentor videos of uh, when I'm out and about with on my own or with David or whatever, it seems to be sort of the ability to use a bike for one purpose only. And that's normally to get some chips, bacon roll, cup of tea, occasional beer, <coughs> and uh, that sort of thing. Of course, that's why we have motorbikes, to pointlessly ride to a destination and enjoy that ride, and, uh, well, but of course the destination is important. Good bacon roll, good chips, as you may have seen in my last video, with the chip cart, um, if you haven't. Take a look above the link. Anyway, it's just nice. It feels positively sporty, and yet you're comfortable. Very comfortable. Yeah, I'm still in sport mode going through this village. A little bit more snatchy where it was very smooth before, but fine, fine. I haven't used cruise control, but uh, it is there, which is great. I put the bike in rain mode, just, well, why not try some modes? But now, yeah. It's good. It's gentle, progressive power. Of course, cool, something smells bad here. The road is a bit shitey here, so probably not bad to have it in rain mode at the end of the day. Look at that crap on the road. Well, so, here's a question for you. Do you have a Harley Davidson? Have you lusted after one? Um, if you don't have a Harley Davidson, then w why get one? Well, there's something very special, I have to say. I can't actually put my finger on it about owning a Harley Davidson. To me, with well, its iconic, the V-twin, that sort of look, and this has got some slightly different looks to the average Harley that's gone in the past, just as Fat Bob has. But it's still a Harley Davidson. It's still, in my eyes, this is a beautiful looking machine, as we'll have a look at later on. So if you're lusting after a Harley, what do you fancy? Everyone likes different things. I like Fat Bob. I really like the look of Fat Bob. Did everything for me. It handles pretty well. And, uh, you know, makes me smile. Big time. This is making me smile. This looks good. Mostly. I'll go through that a little bit later on. Um, 
it's a Harley. And it's not expensive. Uh, well, in, you know, in the scheme of things, it's cheap. And yet you get so much with it. You've got the fastest Harley you can buy in terms of performance. Maybe the Pan America is a bit quicker, but in terms of a cruiser, still a cruiser. A nice little A road. A bit greasy, so we're going steady. Still in sports mode, which isn't that wise when it's greasy road, is it? Very slippery. I actually felt the, the rear move a tiny bit there. A lot of talk. Let's get the cruise on. Turn it on. Set. Ah, lovely. Cruise control. Lovely job. So 60 mile an hour indicator, just over 3,000 revs. And Fat Bob's doing just over 2,000 revs. So, yeah, it's a bit more than uh, uh -huh, cafe time. A bit more revs, but it doesn't feel revvy. You've got up to 8,000 red line. I mean, not a problem, is it? So I go to this cafe, have a cup of tea. Time to get a cup of tea, I think. Looking good. Now, Brembo brake, one big one. Actually, the brakes feel absolutely super. Same at the rear, so quality components there. Eh? Okay, looks a bit ugly with the helmet hanging on it. <laughs> so, uh, issues potentially, um, a bit like that, Bob. You've got the uh, rectifier down here, which mine got damaged with paint issues, but the new one's been fine, so I hope that, that one will be fine as well. The oil cooler I don't have protected. This is a radiator because it's water cooled. Um, I think I would like some sort of aftermarket protection across there. Um, I'm sure there'll be something soon. This, this has only just come out this bike. So to get all of those sort of things is going to take a while. People have mentioned, is that going to get hot? Well, the engine's hot. But you can touch that. It's not burning me at all. Now it is autumn. Probably up 13, 14 degrees today. Yeah, that's still hot. <laughs> so one has got to think about yeah the protection for pillion as well. Um, there is a pillion seat option. I guess there must be foot pegs for it. But where do they mount, I wonder? There's lots of things to consider. But it's bloody good to ride, I have to say. Right, I'm going to drink my cup of tea over here. Yeah, I'm going to drink my cup of tea. Now I've got a sausage bat coming up. Great, eh? This is the life. Motorcycling. Fair <laughs> sausage bat. Now, I know I'm meant to be reviewing the motorbike. I'll give you an idea between that and Fat Bob or whatever. Look at this. That. Is what I call a sausage bat. It looks good, doesn't it? We'll see what it tastes like. Right. I'm going to go back the same way as I came because the roads are good. Bye. It's a quick, quick machine. Now I'm going to put it into. Uh, well, let's turn the cruise control on into uh, road mode rather than sport. I'm not sure, I need to ask when I get back, if whether it has traction control. Whether those modes only just reduce the, you know, the, the power or the delivery of power, or whether they actually have some effect over traction control if it has it. Now, 
if it has traction control then that's good because uh, it does make it more idiot proof and I do like that on my BMW now you can see the speed I'm doing here it's more sort of a David and Martin Fintor ride out speed nice and steady join the countryside even though this is a really fast piece of a road it's lovely very comfortable I like the feet fall position it's a, it's a bit more compact than Fat Bob. You're leaning forward a bit more, the handlebars. It's a little bit lower down, but it's fine. It's very nice, very nice. I'm enjoying it. Oh, by the way, the uh, sausage bat was delicious. A nice cup of tea, less than a fiver. Bargain. Anyway. While I'm going along this beautiful road, let me tell you about some figures, and I mean the ones that come out of your bank account. So this bike with the sat-nav and all that lovely display, the cruise control, the huge amounts of power, 120 horsepower, I think 120 something newton meters of torque, and believe me, it pulls, pulls bloody hard. Um, tuned for grunt, and I think they've certainly got, I haven't been above. 6,000 revs or something, I don't know. Um, of course it's still running in, so probably should be careful with it, but it pulls absolutely brilliantly. So, figure-wise, don't worry about it. I'm sure there'll be tuning kits for these, and you can imagine the same engine does a puts out 150 horsepower in the Pan America. I'll bet there'll be a tuning kit for this to set it to the same at some point. Anyway, um, there'll be noisier pipes bound to be, it's a Harley aftermarket ones, now there'll be more and more restrictions on bike noise and whatever but there will be some noisier in cans coming at some point you know it'll be the case because to me it's a little bit well it's lovely, but I do like that one of the reasons I have a Harley, I love the sound with my uh, not straight through pipes but uh, Vance and Hines slip on the cans. I think it, it sounds to me just bloody lovely. You can go steadily and quietly with a small throttle opening. Open it up, boom, boom, boom. David prefers peace and quiet. So he always takes a mickey out of me with my noisy Harley. But, uh, you know, that's what I like. Uh, I haven't got around the figures, have I? Figure, figure, figures. This bike is 13995 on the road. Now if you compare it to Fat Bob, that's 16995 on the road. Three grand more for Fat Bob. This is cruise control. 400 quid upgrade I paid for cruise control. I think about that anyway. Fat Bob, my Fat Bob's got stage two. So that's the, well that is the noisier pipes, but then it's the cams. So, the pipes and cams, to get the extra power, um, cost me nearly £2,000. And this is a lot, a lot quicker than Fat Bob, even with my Stage 2. This weighs a lot less. I think it's 120-something kilogram. Uh, sorry, not 100. 220-something, that would be like. 220 kilograms. 220 something kilograms. That's a light cruiser. Fat Bob, 300 kilograms. Huge difference in weight. Corners. Just corners beautifully. So does Fat Bob actually. But I think the lighter weight you can feel. You can feel in the corners. This is a probably a little bit more stable. Not a lot. Fat Bob does corner beautifully. Can't fault it for a cruiser. Oh, it smells here. Oh, something you could have sm smelly YouTube. Oh, <coughs> blimey me! That pen and inks there. Hell. Oh dear. I think that's a chicken farm or something. Oh, we won't live near that. Oh, a bit greasy through here. 
Yeah, so uh, figure-wise, I mean, to get the same, or to get anywhere near a bit of performance out of Fat Bob, to get the cruise control, you're looking at 19 and a half grand for this prices. That's a lot of dough compared to 13, 9, 9, well, 14 grand. Let's say 19 and a half, 14. That's a lot more dough. They're both Harley Davidsons. They're both beautiful. Except the rear bit. On both bikes, the rear bit's horrible. But you can change the fat bob. You can't change this bit yet, as I discussed earlier. And do come along. If you like, if you're in the market for a Harley and you think they're clunky, awful, noisy things, and then they brought the Milwaukee 8 out, and that's when I. Well, people would argue, wouldn't they? But um, I found the Milwaukee 8 to be smooth. A beautiful engine. It's got the torque, got a lot more grunt than the previous uh, engines, and without the, uh, the vibes, without too many vibes, it's got just the right amount of vibes. This feels alive. This feels like a Harley in terms of the grunt. Just a bit quiet. 1250 cc. Not exactly small. Okay, Fat Bob's 1860. 1250, 1860. This just got more. Lighter, more punch. Fantastic. Now, I'm not a huge fan of these sort of high rise um, exhausts. They look nice, and as you could see, I was showing you earlier, you're not going to burn your, your bum on it. Not on a day like today. Um, I'm not sure how it'll work for a pillion. We'll have to look at those options. I'm going to look at a few bits and pieces when I get back to the uh, dealership. But anyway, it's lovely. And you will not be disappointed by the ride on this. You really won't. Look, it's a bit greasy here. You're not going to be disappointed. You're not, not, not going to be disappointed. It's a Harley for sports bike fans. <laughs> What's well, a Harley with performance? Look at that. I'm not in sports mode either. Just put it in there. Sport. It definitely makes a difference, sports mode, to how it feels, if nothing else. It feels quicker, whether it really is or it's, it is just literally makes the uh, throttle opening more sensitive. <laughs> yes, it's good. Now, one of the things um, I noticed on here is I don't know how big the fuel tank is. I'll put it up on the screen. But it must be smaller than Fat Bob because um, it was pretty much full when I started. It said 101 miles range. Now down to 72 miles uh, range. So um, probably wasn't quite full. But I, the range indication on Fat Bob can be up to 180 miles. And certainly. Uh, I did uh, on Saturday, 128 miles, and uh, still had over 50 indicated left on the uh, on the bike when I filled up. So it is pretty good on going a distance. Then again, you know, I've got the Energica, which has a battery range of around 115, 120 miles, depending on what mood I'm in or 100 miles if I'm giving it some speed um, but of course you can fill petrol very quickly the electric bike takes a little bit longer to uh, get the electrons back in but I think people are going to get put off by that at the end of the day this is fun and after 80 miles of fun 
quick five minute fill up ain't a big deal is it? It really isn't. It really does turn beautifully. Now the interesting thing is going to be getting back on Fat Bob afterwards. Is it going to feel a bit pants? Mm. This is lovely. I have to say, I think if you could get the side, the lovely side bit, uh, get the in indicators and stuff tidied up, noisy exhaust, set slightly noisy exhaust, so it sounds like a Harley, uh, heater grips, which there's a button for it, and uh, I think there'll be an accessory available very, very soon if they're not already. I could be interested in a bike like this. But then, you know, Fat Bob, I love it. It just gives me huge smiles. I don't need the speed that this has when I'm on Fat Bob. I'm generally only going 60. This is a really super bit of road, this. You're not going to be disappointed. I think if you thought about Harley and been putting them off, come and try this. You're going to absolutely love it. This is lovely. It really is a lovely bike to ride on a on a road like that. Yeah, the other thing for me is uh, pillion. I like to take pillion sometimes. Fat Bob, I've got the an aftermarket, a really nice big fat seat, sissy bar. Very comfortable for the pillion. Would this be as good? Where do the foot pegs go for a pillion? You know, that sort of thing. But if you don't take a pillion, then fine. Or this could be your bike when you don't have a pillion and you've got a bike where you do have a pillion. But I think it's nice if you can share, if you've got more than one bike, um, then it's nice if you can share it, if you regularly take a pillion on the back with you, um, it's nice if you can share that those times. Um, for instance, the Energica, yeah, it's got a pillion seat, but not really very nice for a pillion for very long, it's so small. Um, BMW, superb for pillion. Fat Bob, good for pillion. Uh, GSX 1400, really good for pillion. So, you know, it'd be something that would, uh, for me, be an issue, potentially. It may not be for you. In town, this is very smooth, easy to ride. Lovely. All the controls smooth as smooth as butter. Nice lightweight clutch. The road settings really nice, buttery smooth. The normal road setting, not the sport setting. That's good. Of course it's going to pour with rain, the roads are going to get covered in sludge and when I get home with Fat Bob it's going to need the old snow foam treatment, never mind. Serves me right for skiving a day off work doesn't it? Shh, don't tell the boss. Just uh, arriving back at Newmarket Harley and we're uh, going to do a sort of outside comparison to Fat Bob because I think that's the uh, closest Harley Davidson to this in terms of if you're looking for a certain look they both have a similar look and 
you know what, I'm going to have a look at the accessories and see how they might work out. So I spoke about my Fat Bob having rather more expensive tastes. So the cruise control, the Stage 2, put in the price if you were to buy it all today up to nearly 19 and a half grand. Well that's without the other extras I've got on. So I've got the, the lovely sissy bar, a rack that's detachable, bag, well that's luggage isn't it? I've also got the heater grips. Now of course there'll be the heater grips with this uh, uh, Sportster S as well, so probably we're quits there, aren't we? Um, but of course, one of the things that uh, a lot of people will probably say, and I don't like it on the Fat Bob, is the, the rear sort of fender, um, as you can see. Um, but here, I have the side mounted one. Now that's relatively easy because the, the lights are still mounted on the fender here. So it's just a case of removing the bit that goes over the back wheel and having a side mounted plate. Where here, the lights are all mounted on that piece. So what's needed is some sort of fitting up here, I would suggest, to take that and then a side mounting plate. I'm sure there'll be one before long, but that to me spoils it a little bit. Now, luckily today's been generally dry. I mean, can imagine this wheel's gonna throw up a lot of muck. As you can see on Fat Bob, the same issue. So the backpack, you see that? From this morning. So the backpack and and the sissy bar stops it from spraying over me. It's not ideal, it's not the best weather protection, but it looks good. I mean, you've got to look good rather than weather protection. But this doesn't have that at all. There's nothing there. So there are some accessories we'll have a look at that do solve that problem. So if I was buying it, I would get the extender fender mod, uh, probably the tail pack, sissy bar, those sort of things. Um, so they're gonna add up as well. Oh, I've got the... Uh, I've not mentioned this before. I've got a completely different seat. So this isn't your standard fat bob seat. The standard fat bob seat, a tiny little narrow bit here. There. So mine's nice and fat to take a passenger with comfort. So one of the things, if you're ordering one of these, you should get is this fender extender. Looks quite good and it will keep all of the shite from going over your back. I think you'll agree with me, Fat Bob. Well, you might not agree with me. I love the look of Fat Bob. The Sportster's got a very, very similar look, isn't it? It really has. You've got the same chunky fat tyres, front and rear. But it handles amazingly. How does it do it with those tyres? The same with Fat Bob. Chunky front tyre, chunky rear tyre. Both V twin engines. Both of these bikes in black. Actually, I do like this paint on the tank. Standard black option, the cheapest paint, and it looks lovely. I love the sort of bronze coloured uh, engine covers, etc. Of course, I've got the bronze sort of exhaust bit on the fat bob all very nice so very similar looking aren't they very similar looking not similar looking similar styles now, I really really like the square headlight of fat bob but I like this more because it doesn't have a surround it's just naked it's bare I love that now if we look at fat bob it's got like yes I'd, I, I'd prefer the naked front of the Sportster. There's not a lot in it for looks, is there? They both look good. Oh, but I think they both look good. Sportster, a little bit more compact.
that Sportster was fun. And interestingly, torque-wise, no wonder it's rapid, it's pretty similar torque to Fat Bob's stage two with torque cams. And uh, about 70 kilograms less weight. That's a lot. No wonder it's quick. But listen to that. I'm sitting more in Fat Bob, the bars are up higher, a bit, sort of, a bit lower down on the sports, Sportster, but nonetheless, not a problem. So how does this feel, getting back on Fat Bob? We well, shall see. We'll get on the road, and I'll describe the difference. It's interesting, isn't it, because, yeah, I, I can really feel the performance was significantly more than Fat Bob. So yeah, they're in your proper Harley sound on Fat Bob with the Milwaukee 8. Lovely, lovely sound. And, you know, it does push you. It is quick. But the Sportster is next step up in speed performance. So sit more into Fat Bob, a bit more on top of the Sportster, but it's still low and lovely to sit on. Sport, yeah, Sportster in third gear was rapid. Well, so is this, really. And it makes a lot more noise whilst doing it. <laughs> Pain is what you want. I think if you want a more traditional Harley, even Fat Bob's not that traditional, engine is, but the, uh, the rest of the bike's a little bit more sort of street fighter-ish, whatever you like, I don't know what you like to call it, with the rectangular headlight. So is that Sportster S. I like that look. Sports Rest looks good, looks beautiful. Better from the front, I think, than Fat Bob. Side view, equal, just as attractive. Um, when it comes to the rear view, well, both have got the stupid number plate fender thing that needs removing. Smoothness riding through town, that Sports is going to be a lot better for it. Going through traffic, it's lighter. Smoother, the clutch is lighter. Um, buttery power delivery, the different riding modes, handling. Well, just as a ball suspension on the Sportster. I mean, I don't know what it was set on, it was a little bit firm for me, but it handled absolutely brilliantly. One inch fatter tyres, front and rear, than Fat Bob, so the fat on here. They're 160 at the front, 180 at the back on the Sportster. Where they're 150 at the front here and 170 at the back. So, a bit of a difference in size. It's chunkier, fatter, but they still handles the tree. Oh, after all, you've got lots of rubber, lots of grip. Lovely job. Well, I need to give you my conclusions, but. The only conclusion I can make is just like other things, and I'm not bucking out. I'm not saying you should buy this or should buy that. Why don't I make a decision? Because it's up to you. Everyone likes something different. Will I be buying a Sportster? Not at the moment. But I have to say, the ride was awesome. Um, it's a bit like you look in your garage when you've got a few bikes like I have. Depending on your mood, which bike do you take? And the bike that gives me the most smiles to ride is the Energica because of its handling mega power. I think I've had that Sportster in the garage. That might be the one for that sort of blasting moment, blasting afternoon out. Good. So good. I just love it. The sound, 
it's a proper air-cooled Harley after all. Right, back to work. <laughs> Thanks for watching Pentor. I've had a great morning testing out the new Sportster S. And what a bike. I think you've just got to get out there and test one. If you like Fat Bob's design, if you like the Sportster's design, both look good. Which one has the edge in looks? Only you can decide. Which one rides the best? Well, that's the Sportster S, absolutely for sure. But what gives you the most smiles? Well, something very special about Fat Bob. That Milwaukee 8, the sound, the shove, just the relaxing way. Harley's not slow, not now. The Sportster S is here. The Sportster S is certainly no slow cruiser. It is a good, very, very, very good. I recommend you go and try one. If you live in East Anglia, give the guys at Newmarket Harley a call. I'm not biased at all, am I? No, I'm actually not. But they are uh, good guys. Always keen to get people out on bikes, which is good from any dealer. At the end of the day, unless you ride, you don't know. So get over there and get on a Sportster. Thanks for watching Fentor. Hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you very soon. Bye bye.